What is up, fellow nerds, and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to UNPL Week 3. We are off to a really good start this season, and uh, we're 2-0. Oh. We're 2-0. Oh. We took two victories so far. If you have not seen either of those, make sure to check out the playlist. I'll put that up in the iCard above for you. Make sure to check out both of those. Week 1 was a 6-0. Last week was a little bit closer, um, but we still were able to pull it out, and... You know, looking at back at these matchups, I think that they were slightly in my favor, maybe. This week is very different. It is very, very much so not in my favor. So we have got uh, an uphill battle this week, but maybe we've got a shot. We will just have to see. Make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. As you can see, most people who watch the channel are not subscribed, so please don't be one of those people. Less than 10%, guys. Come on. Come on, go ahead and press that sub button. You absolutely will not regret it. But of course, you can change your mind at any time. We put out primarily Dungeons and Dragons content, but we also do Draft League stuff on the weekends. And so we have a great time with that. Make sure to share this video with your friends as well. And if you're into D&D, make sure to consider being a member. We have a lot of really great stuff there as well. So this week we are going up against Arts and Arts is a really talented battler. Um, he is also 2 0 at this point, and so yeah, we've kind of got our work cut out for us. Uh, his team is very, very scary, and so you know, looking through my team, I would love to show you my switch in for Chi Yu. If I had one, so yeah, that, that's a bit a bit of a, a problem. Um, also, Corviknight, I don't really have a great answer for Corviknight, uh, just because my, my fire type is. Flareon and so that's a little a little limiting um, so yeah I've, I've got some issues with this team for sure and so um, we're, we're gonna do our best to get through this week and then uh, we'll have to bounce back later on if uh, if things go south but let's go ahead and take a look at what I am bringing this week to try to give this my best shot we're gonna go ahead and start us off with Meowskarada. Meowskarada has come every week and, and I can see it coming most weeks um there there aren't a ton of situations where i think this is going to stay on the bench just because it's a really really great mon now we've run sash up to this point both of the weeks that uh, that we've brought it but this week we're running choice scarf choice scarf allows us to outrun anything on his team uh, we don't actually need any speed investment to outrun everything on his team um, we can just run adamant with the scarf and we are going to outspeed absolutely everything so pretty standard as far as our move pool here flower trick knockoff play rough you turn that allows us to hit almost everything on his team um, of course knockoff is going to be huge for getting rid of some of those crucial items that will really help to neuter a lot of those really powerful threats a lot of them are really relying on some good items and so i want to make sure that we can remove those if so u-turn of course is going to help us to make sure that we can always stay ahead and uh, that's going to be huge in this game positioning is going to be absolutely huge in this game uh, i've done a few mocks i lost every single one of them but i learned a lot about how this team could function and uh it it, it really really counts when it comes to positioning Next up, I wanted to bring Dragonite, and Dragonite, of course, is uh, is a great mon. I love it, um, and I wanted to make sure that I brought the weakness policy, Dragon Dance kind of stuff at least once, and so I wanted to go ahead and slot it in on this one right here. Obviously, it might not go off. It, it might be a little bit uh, limiting in what it can do. But if this thing does pop off, then we may actually have a shot at this. Um, we've got Fire Punch, of course, for the Corviknight. That's that's the biggest thing. Um, Ice Spinner and Earthquake, of course, uh, for Chi Yu. And Ice Spinner hits a lot of his team. He has a lot of Ice Weaknesses. So these three moves really cover the team pretty well. And so I'm excited to see if this thing can pop off. If so, this might be a good win condition um, we've got enough speed to where we can outspeed a a chi yu if we are at plus one um, so we definitely are looking to get that dragon dance off uh, in order to do that next up we've got golden go and we're bringing screens golden go this week with memento this is going to possibly help us to get set up um, especially with dragonite um, allow us to get up the one dragon dance and then uh, and then kind of go nuts so we can set up the screen that's especially going to be helpful when it comes to making sure that chi yu isn't just taking a ko 
every time it switches in. The only problem is that every time Golden Go comes in, it invites in Chi Yu. So that it's kind of a kind of a tough thing there. We've of course got Memento there to give a minus two in both attacking stats to whatever the opponent has at the cost of Golden Go. But if it means that we can get a good position to possibly get Dragonite set up, then it's absolutely worth it. So that is kind of our, our play there. Um, and then make it rain, of course, just to have an offensive move. Next up, we've got Sylveon. We're bringing Assault Vest Sylveon this week with uh, with a little bit of HP investment, this is going to be our somewhat Chiyu answer. Um, we, we definitely need a lot of bulk on that special side in order to get through this week. And Sylveon is kind of uh, kind of what fits the bill. We're not going for, a, you know, the 6-0 sweep again this week with uh, with this, uh, but it's it's definitely got some potential. Um, we are running Trailblaze actually on this this week in order to buff our speed up a little bit. And so if we could get off a trailblazer too, then we could actually be doing pretty decently. Uh, but we'll just have to see what happens. But Hyper Voice, Psychic, of course, for Okie Dogie, and then Shadow Ball helps to cover a few other things, which is nice. Next up, we've got Monkey Dory, and we have brought a scarf set up to this point. We're bringing Specs this week. And the biggest reason we're bringing Specs is because I would like to trick them onto that Corviknight. If we can give choice Specs to Corviknight, then we are going to be in a really good position. And in my we figured out a sequence of events that typically would lead to this of course arts does not have to do this so it may completely fall apart in which case I may end up tricking over specs to Chi Yu, and then the game's pretty much over uh, but we at least have somewhat of a plan of getting this over to the uh, over to the Corviknight and then that really neuters it right it can't be you turning around unless it wants to forego getting up a roost right or if it wants to roost it has to roost and then manually switch out right so it, it really really neuters that thing and that's something i really need i need that thing to be as passive as possible and not be able to uh, get in all the threats that uh, that it normally would on top of being really really bulky um, and then finally of course the big bear ursaluna we are bringing ursaluna with another assault vest this week um, i saw a, a comment in the uh, week one watch through of uh, that everybody brings flame orb week one and then av the rest of the season i promise you we are not going to bring av the rest of the season and um, so we, we're going to bring av this week with uh, with some bulk in there but we are not going to be bringing it every single week i promise uh, but we've of course got the adamant nature here earthquake ice punch fire punch and drain punch for all of the coverage so that's our team for this week. I hope you guys are looking forward to it. I know that I am, and so I'm going to link up with Arts here, and we are going to have us an awesome battle. So we'll see you in just a second. So here we go, and you'll notice that things look a little bit weird this week, and well, it is, uh, it's because we had some issues with our capture card this week, and basically the video part is completely messed up and unusable and so instead we're going to have to be watching this from the wrong side now i want to say a huge thank you to arts for getting his video ready so quickly so that i could get my side done um he he was a great sport about it and and definitely uh he did not have to do that um but we we are gonna we're gonna make this work right i still want to give you all a great video um and and in an awesome battle um i will say this is this is a pretty cool match um now i'm doing post -com instead of uh the uh during the match but this was a lot of fun i, I think this team is really hard arts's team was one of my tougher matchups this season um and so yeah i was i was really really scared of basically his whole squad but essentially i'm gonna lead with monkey here monkey of course has that trick with the specs and so to me if i can go ahead and neuter that uh corvanite turn one i'm gonna be in a really good spot right and so i mean of course my opponent is gonna feel really safe having corvanite in on a monkey dory because i mean you know what's monkey dory gonna do this is just free this is just free damage as far as as far as I'm concerned. If I'm trying to set anything up weird, if I'm trying to do anything funky, like who cares, right? And so I don't think the trick was ever something that crossed Arts's mind here, but we're able to get that off on turn one, which is 
huge, right? So we go ahead and take that Rocky helmet, which is really, really great. And then of course we get to throw it right back in my opponent's face as, uh, as he smacks right into that and deals damage to himself, which is really, really fun. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's really cool. Of course, Monkey isn't going to be much of a defensive option, so the helmet doesn't help it all that much, but the specs certainly hurt this Corviknight. And so this definitely uh, makes me feel a lot better because this is something that uh, is just kind of free for my opponent. The, this Mon is really hard for me to deal with, but my opponent does just go hard into Chi Yu here. And I'm also going to switch as well. Monkey has done its job. And so I'm just going to go straight out into, into my Ursa Luna because I'm predicting a switch here. I also could, of course, uh, hit with the fire punch at this point if I wanted to, but I, I'm, I go into this and this is a really decent switch for me. Um, we have the bulk to take one hit, not well, not, not well at all, uh, but we can actually take a hit on our Saluna and of course KO it back with, uh, with a couple of different things. And so my opponent of course feels very safe just switching back out here. I don't really have any reason to predict here at this point. Um, I'm just going to of course make an attack and uh and we will definitely go from there uh it's definitely it's difficult going through uh going through a battle and uh not being able to see your side it definitely helps with the uh, with the narration but he does go back into the corviknight here and um of course we're just not really in a position to make a lot of predictions so we do just click the drain punch here it covers this somewhat it covers the uh the chi yu it covers it covers both here and so my opponent is pretty free to go for an, a body press here. I'm not really super keen on taking a lot of damage on, on Ursaluna just because it is decently bulky, especially with the AV that we brought this week. Um, so, you know, it's fine, I guess. Uh, but I don't know, it, it's not it's not the best situation. I probably shouldn't have stayed in here and taken unnecessary damage. In fairness, it doesn't do all that much. But uh, yeah, and then Fire Punch gets this thing down per to decently low and my opponent pretty much is forced to switch out at this point. Definitely uh, not wanting to lose this because while it is spexed, it still can roost and then possibly deal a little bit of damage later. It is a pretty decent check anyway to, uh, to a couple of things on my team, especially the Monkey Dory that doesn't really do anything. Um, so it can pretty much come in and, and freely roost on on some things like that so definitely uh definitely not a terrible uh definitely not a terrible thing to save in in this situation um as you can see the uh the scream tail is of course rocking a really interesting set a really cool set this week um on the support side this thing is is really nasty it's a really really cool set uh, my opponent, of course, is kind of struggling on on what to do, trying to see if I'm going to click Fire Punch again, if it should stay in, what what should happen. I kind of over predict here, and I assumed that he was going to switch, and so I went into my Golden Go, which I mean is safe in 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 a way, you know, like it's free. I know that he can't do any damage to me, but at the same time, I probably should have just taken the KO. Um, it would have it would have saved me a lot of issues later. And it does also very much invite in this darn, this darn bear. Like, like I have Ursaluna, which is the big bear. This thing is the little bear. And this thing is so annoying. Um, I, I love Komala. I can't, I really can't, like, I, I can't say anything too bad about it because it is one of my wife's favorite Pokemon. Um, but so is, so is Ursaluna, you know, and so it's, it's tough. This thing is incredibly annoying for my team. And I will say that I really didn't bring a whole lot for it. I really thought that this thing wouldn't even come, first of all, much less be uh, be an issue. But yeah, this thing's bulky. It's a good spinner. It gets some decent coverage now. You know, it has, you know, normal ice and ground, which is really good offensive coverage, to be honest. Um, so yeah, this thing should not be slept on. It's it's actually decent, and especially after they gave the bu the boost of speed with rapid spin, it really really helps this thing out to be halfway decent. It just needs last resort back. That's the only thing that it's really missing from being great. Um, but yeah, so I switch in Ursaluna, which is probably not the best thing because um, then I'm going to lose my assault vest, which kind of sucks. Um, yeah, it definitely makes switching into Chi Yu a lot harder. 
uh, and definitely makes me incredibly susceptible to the uh, Terra Ice or Water on that Jolteon. So yeah, I've, I've kind of put myself in a, in a rough spot by by doing this so that's unfortunate and that's that's completely on me that's a, a bit of a, a bit of a misplay um i will say that that my play throughout this battle was not always the the best um i i, had, I came off of last week playing one of my best games i've played in a while into this week where i've uh, I, I made a few questionable calls for sure but i do go for the drain punch here and my opponent i guess forgets that going for roost uh, gets rid of your flying typing, and so it's going to actually make Drain Punch uh, super effective. And so I'm just gonna heal. Like I I'm just clicking Drain Punch because it's free, and so I'm gonna get back a lot of health. So that was definitely a, a an an oversight on my opponent's part uh, going for that. But in the grand scheme, I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference. I definitely should have predicted the switch here. I didn't, and so I'm going to end up clicking the Drain Punch again. And it's going to do like 20. It it does nothing to this Screamtail, uh, which is uh, which is disappointing. Screamtail is also really good in this match, and I, I think I underestimated it. I, I really thought that Golden Go was going to be able to just kind of destroy this thing, and I was just kind of mistaken in that in that regard. Um, maybe I needed something a little more offensive with Golden Go rather than going the screens route, but you know that's that's what we went with and uh it, it's 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 a bit tough right but we are uh, we're still going to give this our best shot because i think that we still you know can win this i think we've got a lot of really good tools i think sylveon looks really good in the late game for helping us check uh check that reggie drago helping us possibly check uh the chi Yu if we can uh come in you know we're, we're not sure if he's going to be like choice or if he's going to be like nasty plot at this point um, he, he really hasn't revealed anything about his set at this point, so I don't really know what kind of a Chi Yu he has. So I'm still I'm still trying to figure that out at this point. But I go ahead and go Sylveon here. I'm not really sure what to expect out of Screamtail, because Screamtails can do, like, anything. Uh, they they have so much versatility, um, and, and there are so many viable sets that you can run. And so I go into this as kind of a kind of a special wall, kind of feeling out what uh, my opponent wants to do again golden go i think was the right call because then it couldn't have been hit with the thunder wave but in fairness sylveon really isn't all that fast anyway we do go ahead and click the trailblaze here and of course that's gonna really not matter in the grand scheme just because you know we're we're paralyzed so being a plus one means absolutely nothing and so my opponent just realizes that you know he's okay with uh letting the uh, Corviknight go, and I'm over here thinking about what, what I'm going to do. I, I think sacking the Corviknight is the right play at this point. It's been neutered, and I think that really he's going to be fine with the combination of the Screamtail plus the Komala, which is uh, which is really good for my opponent. I, I think that he's, uh, I think he's playing really, really well. So, of course, at this point, pressure comes out, and I'm just going to click Shadow Ball here just to try to get that for a little bit of damage. And that is going to take out the Corviknight. So we do claim the first KO of the match, which is nice. Um, but I definitely would not say that we are in the lead at this point. I definitely think that my opponent is uh, is outplaying me in many aspects. And I, I definitely need to uh, I, I need to pick up the pace of, of what I'm doing. Um, so my opponent, of course, is going to think about this for a little bit. And um, there's not really a great switch in to this. I mean, really, the only switch in is the is the bear. Like this is this is it. Kamala's the only switch in. Um, and so yeah, the, like I take hits from pretty much everything else on Sylveon, especially because I'm AV. Um, for that reason, I really need to preserve HP on this thing. Uh, but yeah, this thing is is Wish plus Ice Spinner knockoff Body Slam. That's a really good set into my team. My opponent did really, really good prep. Um, I'm, I'm really impressed with uh, with the team that he came with this week, and um, just, just really, really did a great job. Um, and so again, me like, kind of, uh, kind of not, not wanting to predict anything. I, I do just stay in here, and I predicted him to not stay in, and 
no, actually, this is where I, I misclicked. I was stuck in the menu looking at things and I accidentally double clicked and I did not mean to press Shadow Ball. Yeah, I remember doing that. That wasn't, again, ag again, I should have clicked Hyper Voice there and let it deal some decent damage, but I misclicked and then here I'm, I'm getting upset about it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that that was a, a misclick and, and it definitely wasn't great because having extra damage on this Kamala would have been fantastic. So now I got to go into Golden Go and uh, just kind of sit here. Of course, the Body Slam isn't going to really do anything, but of course, Knock Off is still very free. Uh, my opponent does go ahead and go for a Wish here just to see what, uh, what I want to do. And I mean, really the only thing I have to do is kind of just set screens. Uh, this Golden Go just ended up not being as effective in this matchup as what I was really hoping that it would. And that's unfortunate, right? Go Golden Go is a great mon. I absolutely love having it on my team. I, I bring it almost every week. Um, but just just in this matchup, this set just uh, just just isn't quite uh, it isn't quite checking the team like what I was hoping that it would. So a little unfortunate, but it's totally fine. Um, so, of course, we're going to think about this for a while on what we want to do and finally set up a light screen. I was predicting him to swap out into the Chi Yu at this point. Uh, he did not do that. He just went in and set up the Wish, which is very smart. Um, so he can either stay in if he wants to and just click knock or he can sweep it, switch into something and let that take the Wish, which either one is is totally fine. I go ahead and set up the reflect so that I don't take all that much damage. Uh, and it really doesn't do that much through the reflect, which is great. Uh, but my light clay is gone. And so I'm not going to be uh, going beyond the uh, the five turns anymore in this match. So definitely unfortunate there, but not the end of the world, I don't guess. Um, and so my opponent really is just going to kind of stay in and, and, and feel out what's going on here. And I'm gonna go back into Ursaluna. This covers pretty much anything he wants to go for. If he wants to click knock off again, that's fine. Of course, I have already been knocked off, so I don't really care. Um, if you wanna click body slam, maybe you will paralyze me and then I'll get my guts boost. Um, so really anything there is gonna be totally fine. Um, and so I can really just kind of click the drain punch again. Of course, my opponent predicts this and, and I, I should have predicted this. Um, I should have clicked like the ground move or, or something like that, um, but I didn't, and and it's okay. Um, so yeah, it goes into screen tail, and there I do click the earthquake, but it still doesn't do enough. It's still doing less than half because this thing is just so bulky. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's hard. Scream Scream Tail is hard. His team is just so bulky with Scream Tail on support plus Komala plus Reggie Drago. There is just such, such bulk on this squad. Um, goes for the Ice Beam. Of course, I do live that somewhat well. And I click Earthquake again. And of course, it's going to get this thing down really low, but it is not going to be quite enough to take it out, which is unfortunate. Uh, it does live with 58, and now it flips the numbers and goes to 85. My opponent has no reason to uh, really think about this. I mean, it, I'm going to live another Ice Beam here. And so I just click Earthquake, except that I get frozen. And oh man, I was so upset at this freeze. I stay frozen. And yeah, I, w I was very upset about this because this that was this thing gone. And I still had an okay amount of HP. I could come back in on Kamala and heal back up. You wouldn't have had Screamtail around to take my drain punches and I would have been in a great position. Even if I thought out here, I could have gotten a little bit of damage onto the Rage Drago, but spoiler alert, I stay frozen. And it, oh man, it just, it really sucked. Ursaluna really could have, um, could have done a decent amount of work and taken its first KO of the season by, by that not freezing, <sighs> but it did. And so that was really unfortunate. So I go Golden Go here. And um, I am going to try to make sure that I've got Reflect up because I know that this thing is probably going to be Dragon Dance. Um, he brought Dragon Dance last week in week two and got five KOs with it. And so, yeah, it was pretty it was pretty gnarly. Um, he definitely knows how to get this thing in and take advantage of everything that it can do. Um, Arts, like I said, I, I can't compliment my opponent enough. 
Arts is a fantastic player, and um, and and he's got a really great team, and he's he's really uh, he's really shown that he's very comfortable with this team, and uh, yeah, it's it's fantastic. It was it was really a, an honor to be able to to uh, to battle him. So yeah, I mean, he's really not in a position to where he has to do anything crazy. Like he's at plus one, and so he really can just kind of sit and there's not a whole lot that i can really do at this point you know reflect has one more turn but then it's done and basically my opponent can just kind of two shot me or just kind of go for a dragon dance either way is pretty free and i'm kind of asking for a rough situation to be honest um yeah so there's an eq i can make one to reflect uh so that's totally fine and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the momentum in order to drop this thing down to minus one. It really would have sucked if he had gone for the, uh, if he had gone for the Dragon Dance again, because this really wouldn't have uh, made a difference. And then I make possibly my biggest misplay of the entire game. Um, I, I was looking at my calcs here and I was, I was running my numbers and seeing what, what, things would do and that kind of thing and i completely missed that reflect had run out and so i go into dragonite and i count here that dragonite is bulky enough to live one dragon claw if he's at minus or if he's uh i, I lived a dragon claw i think at minus one not knowing he would have outrage um and so yeah i just i just throw my dragonite in the trash for no reason um if i had been boots here rather than weakness policy it would have been fine or if i had hazard removal it would have been fine but i didn't have either one and so this really put me in a bad position i should have just gone sylveon in the first place although this thing is getting worn down quite a bit which is uh which is unfortunate um but you know it, it's it's locked into outrage at this point there's not really a whole lot that my opponent can do and uh this is pretty much a free hyper voice at this point yeah he can't he can't switch he can't change moves outrage is just going to go into the sylveon and do absolutely nothing and so yeah it's 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 a bit unfortunate how that how that played out completely my fault completely a misplay on my on my part um but it going the way that it did does allow sylveon to come in and uh, be able to revenge this which is good this thing does hit like an absolute truck uh it, it's definitely a huge threat even though we terabanned it it doesn't matter this thing is a huge threat in draft uh, and so we are able to one shot this which is fantastic get that thing out of here definitely helpful to uh to not have that in our way anymore but again my sylveon which was my check to the chi yu i've i've kind of allowed it to get worn down a little bit too much and so i'm really opening up chi yu for a a quite explosive end game um my opponent definitely could have gone into the jolteon and taken me out at this point really could have gone into anything i don't know that i have really anything to take a hit pretty much at all um but yeah i i've i've kind of let kind of let my uh my sylveon get a little bit too low at this point and like i said i would love to be able to have ursaluna be able to get some health back and that kind of thing but uh yeah it's it's asleep it's asleep so yeah no none of none of that for me none of that for me it's it's okay so my opponent's gonna go for the body slam which is fine um my best play is to just get damage off on this thing and let this go down because there's not really a whole lot that I can do about it at this point. Um, but yeah, there's the body slam, and we are not going to take it. And it is bye-bye for Sylveon. So it is now 4-3, right? And I still have Meowskarata, Scarf Meowskarata, which I have not gone into at all this game. I have, of course, the Monkey, which I have only gone into on turn one, and then I switched out. Um, so it really hasn't gotten to do a whole lot. And so, yeah, I'm just kind of sitting here like I'm a Rocky Helmet Monkey Dory going crazy. I do hit a Focus Blast, which is great. Monkey Dory doing its job. It does about 66%. It does about a third. But then Knock Off just, just crits me and takes me out. Yeah, big, big sad on that one. So I was, I was pretty upset about losing Monkey Dory there. Um, I was really hoping to be able to 
take out the Kamala, but that didn't work out. Um, yeah, very, very unfortunate. But yeah, like I said, this would be free Ursaluna, but I'm frozen. <laughs> and so that's just, it, it really sucks. And so at this point, I don't really have anything that deals with all of his team. Um, I, I think I could have been, been better off if I had been able to position Ursaluna better and it not have been frozen. Uh, so at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and take this KO with knockoff. And uh, so that'll be the end of the Kamala. So finally here at the uh, at the end of the battle, we finally get that thing out of here. And so my opponent pretty much can can just kind of pick whatever he wants to go into at this point. Um, Yaskarada is pretty fast and it is scarfed. So I'm going to be faster than anything he wants to go into. And I think my opponent can figure that out. So I go ahead and uh, let him bring that in. And I believe I swap out here and just kind of sack Ursaluna, which I don't really know what I was meant to do besides this, uh, just because obviously knockoff, well, knockoff is doing nothing. I mean, at this point, it really doesn't matter, right? Um, just because I don't have a move that is going to take out everything on this team. And so I do actually end up living after the Protean, which is pretty crazy to me. Um, I, I definitely should have uh, just swapped out there at the beginning and not done this, but I don't think it's going to end up affecting the uh, the final score of the match at all. Yeah, just the, the freeze on Ursaluna really sucked. I, I don't think that that was the, you know, the one reason that I lost in this case. I, I definitely think that uh, me playing somewhat poorly is, is the reason why I lost in this case. Um, but either way, I, I think that it was still a very good game. Arts played great. Um, Arts played to his win condition fantastically. Um, and and really, like, in, in the grand scheme, I don't think that luck was really the the reason why I lost. I, I think I started off the, uh, I think I started off the match really strong. But then as it went on, I think I just kind of kind of started throwing away some key things. And, uh, of course, the, the freeze was... Uh, was very unfortunate, but I don't think that that was necessarily um, the reason. It just kind of gave the Reggie Drago some wiggle room there uh, in order to set up that he wouldn't have had. Otherwise, I could have hit that with an ice punch or, or anything else, really. So, yeah, it is what it is. But yeah, I had a really fun time. And of course, huge props to Arts. Arts is a fantastic battler. Make sure that you check out his channel. He is awesome. Again, thank you so much to Arts for sending me his footage so that we could have something to talk over. And of course, next week, we're going to have all this fixed as we battle the one, the only, the legend, D-Ray, the Grandmaster himself. So we're looking forward to that. Make sure that you subscribe. Make sure you like the video and make sure to uh, make sure you click the bell so you're notified when new videos are uploaded. Till next time, stay safe out there. Stay healthy. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.